Hello everyone, it's a great honor to share my research about secure federal learning and adversarial environment here with you. My name is Bo Li and I'm an assistant professor from UIUC. As you all know that machine learning has been ubiquitous in the world, which has been applied to many domains to make our life better. However, even such very powerful machine learning techniques has brought us a lot of security and privacy concerns. For instance, in 2016, the Associated Press Twitter account was hacked via phishing emails, spreading the rumor that the White House has been attacked, which has triggered the autonomous trading bots to dump a large amount of stocks within seconds, as you can see here, and it's swipe about $136 billion within seconds. And this actually happens in real world. And in the meantime, the Australia airport has uh, applied the biometric recognition system for safety screening, which has brought a lot about uh, privacy concerns. And as we all know that we have more and more data today and we have more and more people join to train a large and useful model together. So this brought us to the concern about federative learning. So how secure it is and with many many people participant in the training process, whether it is possible to perform certain attacks to um, say poison or attack the final models in the end. For instance, I think everyone here is very familiar with federative learning. So basically we have uh, several agents, well, each of them have a certain data sets and they can train a local model with their own data set and send their model weights to the aggregator. So the aggregator will help pre, uh, to aggregate the parameters together and then send it back to the each individuals and they can help use that information to improve their models. And we kind of are very familiar with this framework, but this raises us attention or concern about with this many people participant in the training process, what if some of them are adversarial? And is, is whether it is possible to get some adversaries in the training process so that they can use a small amount of unnoticeable, say, poisoning attack to poison the whole pro training process and in the end lead to a severe consequence. So in the next, I will mainly talk about whether it is possible, which of course, the answer is yes, but then next I will briefly discuss what's a potential defense against the such uh, attack. So take the uh, traditional machine learning, uh, say a uh, supervised classifier as an example, it's very easy to perform such so-called poisoning attack or backdoor attack, which means, for example, take the example of uh, image uh, recognition. So this on the left-hand side, there are the benign images. On the right-hand side, as you can see on the left corner, there are some small patterns and those patterns are uh, adverse were injected during training. So they give the label of a specific target, say a bird here, to this uh, training data with specific patterns associated with them. And then we find out if you can, if you train with such backdoor uh, data during training, and in the end, during inference time, whatever data you have, you can add this specific patterns so that that test data will be misrecognized as this um, pre-selected uh, pre label, for example, the bird here. So this is very uh, scary and uh, very um, common in the traditional single model scenario. And next, we really want to ask one question is whether it is possible for, say, some of the workers or the agents in the federal learning scenario that they can inject a certain patterns during training and later on um, um, fool or poison the whole aggregated model, which the answer is yes. And as expected, oh sorry, as expected, we can see if some of the agents are poisoned or they are adversarial by injecting this whole pattern, it is very possible to poison the later aggregate model. And there are some related work showing that this is possible empirically. And next, the real question we want to ask is, can we make it more stealthy for attackers? For example, instead of injecting the whole pattern here as a poisoning or backdoor, which is easy to identify by you know, human if you have really have the time to look at each training point yourself, right? But 
if we can identify such poisoning attacks as attackers, they may have better strategies, which is they can partition the whole training, like the trigger pattern, which is the backdoor pattern, into different partitions. For example, what we really want is this, like the full rectangle pattern to perform as a backdoor so that during testing time, this backdoor pattern can trigger certain adversarial attacks. And in tr during training as attackers, instead of injecting the whole pattern, they can uh, inject partial of the pattern, like this attacker injects this uh, like orange one and this uh, inject this green one, so that we want to understand if the attacker do such very stealthy thing because as in each individual, you can actually not be able to identify they are injecting certain patterns, right? It's kind of like a secret sharing and in the end, after they trained all together to the um, aggregating the model, it's actually whether it can be attacked by certain like a uh, whole uh, trigger patterns together. So let's find out. So we call the previous um, direct attack as a centralized backdoor attack, which means you can directly inject a uh, adversarial pattern for certain uh, adversarial agent and make sure the aggregated model at certain uh, episode will misrecognize uh, the instance into certain pre-selected uh, pre target. And of course, we have a benign objective function to make sure the um, model itself work very well on benign data so that it will not cause a lot of attention in terms of the detection. And the later one, we call it a distributed backdoor attack, which means instead of injecting the whole designed backdoor pattern, we can allow each agent to inject a partial of the um, pattern. And this phi function is very interesting. It can be designed as spatially with different geometry to allocate the partial patterns. And spatially, uh, temporally, we can identify it as different attackers will, this I means the um, iteration. So different attacker will inject this pattern during each different iteration, such that it will be more stealthy to be identified by defenders. And the gamma here shows the scaling factor, which means how much scaling you want to increase this, inject this backdoor partial patterns. And of course, we also have the benign objective function. So by doing this, hopefully, we will find out whether the attacker can perform such distributed backdoor attack against the federated learning model scenarios. And here are some uh, results I want to emphasize. So for example, this conclusion is drawn on MNIST dataset. And you can see all the uh, star types uh, lines show the result for centralized uh, uh, backdoor attacks and the dash lines, uh, sorry, the solid lines shows the uh, distributed attack pattern. And we can see all of the solid lines are higher, meaning that the actually the distributed attack actually perform even better or more effective than the centralized backdoor attack, which is more or less surprising to us because it's kind of like when partition the patterns, they are uh, less of effective, right? But actually it's not. And more interestingly, we find that for each, like uh, for each, like the colored lines here, they are the individual agent who inject the different partial patterns and we evaluate the partial pattern during testing time. And the backdoor, so, sorry, the black line actually shows the whole pattern, means that we evaluate the whole pattern which never appear during training. And very interesting, we find that even this whole pattern never appear during training, it's the most effective attack dur uh, during the testing time, which is what we want as an attacker. So it shows that uh, the global trigger, which is a whole you know, backdoor pattern, actually even never appear in any local training data set, they still uh, obtain a very high attack success rate, which is more or less scary um, in terms of uh, the application the wide application for federated learning uh, nowadays. And another interesting phenomenon we find that if we look at the, the downgrades for the attack success performance, for example, whether they will uh, decay with the time of runs, meaning the later time of runs will be all benign data. There is no backdoor training injected anymore. And we can see um, the centralized attack or other partial pattern will mm, decay with the attack's performance. However, the whole global trigger will stay relatively stable with 
um, large enough runs until very late and they may decay a little bit. So this uh, gives us another um, hint, meaning even we later on use a lot of benign data to retrain the model and re-aggregate, it may, the backdoor pattern or backdoor phenomenon may still stay uh, long enough in our model, which is another pessimistic message for us as a defender. And this similar phenomenon actually can be observed in different data sets beyond MNIST and uh, uh, CIFAR 10 image net and some tabular data as a long from different United States, part of the United States. And we can see um, the backdoor uh, attack success rate as a whole global trigger is always very high. So as a quick takeaway from this work, we show that the distributed attack in factory learning scenario is very possible and it's very powerful with shading some lights on characterizing the robustness of factory learning in, from different perspectives. And also from the, our work, we also have additional analysis for different factors. For example, how do you geometrically uh, allocate the partial backdoor triggers and how do you um, uh, partition those backdoor triggers along a uh, time period during training, and those more or less affect the attack effectiveness as well. And next, we will really want to touch into a little bit about defense, right? This is a message that we show uh, actually federated learning can be poisoned attack easily with a very stealthy types of distributed uh, triggers, right? And how can we defend against uh, such attacks? Is there a way to certifiably show how robust the any uh, federated learning model is? So let's find out. So basically this is a uh, first approval robust classifier against the backdoor. Uh, both in centralized and distributed uh, learning scenarios. And here I mainly want to emphasize the factor for the federal learning and distributed learning scenarios. And here we can see the goal is that during training, we have uh, some set of training data and we may get some poison data with specific patterns in it. And these are the backdoor triggers, right? And the goal is that by doing some process, we can obtain a model which will always predict uh, the same as the model that is trained with a clean data set. So you can see intuitively this is the goal. We want to train a model that during testing time, whatever data with certain triggers you have, it shouldn't predict differently with or without this trigger, meaning that this model will not be backdoor attacked, right? So this is the guarantee we want to get. And how to do this? Um, on a higher level, we can see if in the federal learning scenario for each agent, assuming they are honest, or we can enforce this process for them, which means for all the training data they have, they can add certain noise, say draw from a Gaussian distribution, like uh, Epsilon 1 and uh, for nth agent, it's uh, Epsilon n. Then the whole data is kind of like smoothed out. And then we tr each agent will train the model with this aggregated uh, smoothed data set and then send each individual model to the aggregator to follow some rule to perform the aggregation. And uh, on the uh, result side, we can see by doing this process, very interestingly, we can get a certified robustness uh, uh, for the trained models against the backdoor attacks. For example, this is a result on uh, MNIST. Basically, it means that if your backdoor pattern L2 norm is within say one here and with different ratio of poisoning uh, attack, which is R here, you can get a lower bound of your accuracy, meaning no attack will further attack this model um, and uh, downgrade the performance of this model. So we can see if there are only like two, uh, 20 percent or half of the poisoning instance, the lower bound for the accuracy of the model is not too bad. Meaning with this method, we can certify a relatively good um, accuracy for the, uh, say the image classification models trained in a different uh, distributed way. And similar result can be observed on uh, CIFAR and the ImageNet. Um, so basically this shows that if we can have some constraint on the backdoor patterns, for example, their magnitude, and the train with this most distributed way, we can obtain a certified uh, um, robust model against uh, the backdoor patterns in a uh, federal learning scenario. And um, thanks for the listening. And if you have more questions, I'm happy to answer later. Thank you.